Hi there, I'm Emily, the Drone Angel, and welcome back to your one-stop shop for everything drone related. In case you're new to the drone game or interested in making money from it, there are certain rules, regulations, and authorizations you need to be aware of. Well, it may seem like a lot, you know, with a bunch of drone terms being thrown your way. <laughs> It can be a smooth process. Pull your jets and keep watching to discover why you need authorization for commercial drone flights and how to get authorized to fly commercially. But before we get into it, please take a moment and smash that subscribe button to stay up to date on drone news and tips. What are they doing? Oh, this might be a bit distracting. To my new drone pilots, I'm sure you're wondering, how does the FAA define commercial? Commercial drone flights are defined as drones being used for purposes that are not hobby related. So if you want to use your drone to capture, let's say, footage that you would then sell, then this would be considered commercial. I hear some people say, um, well, I'm, you know, only doing this part time, so it doesn't matter. This isn't my full time gig. Okay, I see. So y'all wanna play, y'all wanna play. Yeah, okay, we're gonna play little games. Fine, mm -hmm. I'll play. It doesn't matter. If you plan to monetize the content that you capture with your little dude, then that flight is considered commercial. If you're a construction company and are using drones to inspect a work site, this would also constitute a commercial flight. So if you're not just a hobbyist flying your drone for fun, then it would be considered commercial. Dude, please stop. <laughs> Actually, they might need a drone pilot. To learn where you can fly and where you need to get authorization to fly as a commercial pilot, visit DJI's website or the Before You Fly app. Most of the time, oop, okay, round two. So most of the time you don't need authorization to fly your drone, but there are areas of the country that have restricted airspace especially around airports. You're essentially flying in the same zones as airplanes, so you need to get authorization to fly in these zones. Or you can just be that Karen, you know, that person that flies super high anywhere they go, including near airports. Karen's like kind of that drunk person at the party that's dancing on the table. <laughs> And the FAA is the police coming in, breaking down the door, and killing that party. People like Karen are killing the drone game. And I'm sorry if your name's Karen, I'm sure you're super sweet and nice. Whether you are flying the new DJI Mavic models or are flying another brand such as Skydio, you are going to need authorization. When you fly your drone beneath 400 feet, you are in Class G airspace, which is not monitored by air traffic control. But you would still need to register your drone. Well, I'm not going to, ever. Even if there's a fire. It's in your best interest to fly legally and remain in good standing with the FAA. Maybe you just don't really care, but we all know you will care when you get in trouble. But how exactly do you get authorization to fly a drone commercially? There are three aspects of the process that you need to be aware of. It's going to seem like a lot when you're first starting out, but if you take each one separately and work slowly through them, you'll find it can be a relatively painless process. It's a piece of cake. Let me break it down for you. Recreational or not, you must register your drone. And this process is pretty straightforward. It can be done in a matter of minutes. For example, let's say you are using Goose here, a Mavic 2 Pro as your drone of choice. Hi there, I'm Goose. That's enough talking, Goose. Go to your corner. The first thing you want to do is register your drone on the FAA's Drone Zone Portal website, which is like a small registration fee of $5. Once you have submitted your information to the FAA, they will provide you with a registration number for your drone. You must put this registration number on the outside of your drone where it is easily seen. I would just use a sticker label machine and print the registration number and put it on the leg of the drone. You're such a good boy, Goose. Once your drone is registered, you can move on to other parts of the authorization process. Now comes the fun part. I'm kidding. It's gonna suck, but it won't suck for long. Now you need to get a Part 107 license if you want to fly commercially. This license is obtained through an extensive 60 question test. Oh no! Suck it up, Buttercup. You can sign up for the test at any time you like, but you need to pass with at least a 70% if you want to receive the Part 107 license. I know you're so excited to study, right? No! God, please, no! No! Studying for the Part 107 can seem like a daunting task, but it shouldn't be. It's just a matter of setting aside time for like a week or two to take an online course or read a book for reference. And I highly recommend creating flashcards to study from because in a few years, you have to renew your license and you are going to take a test that's similar and you want to use those flashcards to study from. So for me personally, I'm very much a visual learner. So I took an online course called Remote Pilot 101 and no, I'm not sponsored yet. I feel like I should be at this point. Daddy chill. But I highly recommend just taking an online course like that and like I said, create note cards or flashcards that you can study from. They like literally sound like they're drilling through my patio right now. Alrighty then. Awesome. Back to it. Once you take the test, you will be one step closer to getting your license. If you pass the test, you will sign up for the remote pilot certificate. 
At some point, you are going to go through some TSA screening, but it's not going to involve you. Once you get word that the screening is complete, you will be able to obtain your license. I recommend reviewing the FAA's restrictions for your drone based on the Part 107. You don't want to break these restrictions. I mean, just look at Goose's cousin. He's in the slammer. <laughs> now, the final part of this process is to request airspace authorization for your drone. If you want to fly your drone in a restricted airspace, you will need to request authorization to fly there. You make this request through the Low Altitude Authorization Notification Capability, also known as LANCE. Now, there are a handful of private companies that facilitate the LANCE authorizations, including AirMap and Skyward. These platforms are easily accessible through your computer, iPad, or smartphone. I was capturing content for a magazine in San Diego, and I had to get authorization to fly at several sites. You see, the airport was close by, along with two stadiums. At the time, I used Skyward to get authorization, but I find that AirMap can be easier to use. So I'll just walk you through how to use it. Once you open up the app, you have to first specify where the area of your flight is. I kill you! <sighs> By letting AirMap and Lance know this, they will provide you with information as to whether it is restricted airspace or not. Next, it's going to ask you a series of questions related to your flight mission, such as the altitude that you're flying at, your name, the drone's name, and more. It will ask you why you should be allowed to fly. You can say something along the lines of, you know, you're following all the drone rules, or just provide a reason for the flight. They will ask for the make, model, and weight of your drone. Then click Next, and it creates a flight plan. Depending on how restricted of an airspace it is, they will allow you to begin your flight immediately, or it will take some extra time to get approved. So I highly suggest planning ahead of time. Once you have been approved, you are ready to begin your drone's commercial flight. I get it, Goose. You really want to fly. Chill out, my friend. It's 6 a.m. and I still need my coffee. Okay, in case you fell asleep and need me to give you the Cliff Notes version on how to fly commercially, you must be at least 16 years old, you must take and pass the exam associated with the Part 107, and you must register your drone with the FAA before you can be granted any sort of authorization. Knowing the rules beforehand will help you avoid any unnecessary issues. Once you have your drone authorized and you have it registered to fly, you can use it for commercial purposes. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, the biggest compliment for me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. If you received any value to today's video, please hit the thumbs up button. Of course, hit subscribe to see more videos and comment below if you have any drone related questions or stories to tell. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. I'll see you in the next video.